Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the BBG and Journey to Immortality. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You'll get my videos as I release them and what more do you want out of your day. Now, this is the long-awaited sort of beginner's guide to this game. Now, I'm sure I'm going to miss one or two things, but that's what the comments are for. And this game is very friendly in terms of community, so if I can't answer your question, I guarantee you one of those people can. For sure. <laughs> now, I'm going to actually follow the main quest itself and I'm going to explain things as I go. I did want to put this on Nox so you could see a cursor um, and actually see where I was clicking without me having to say it out loud because there is a, quite a bit more reading in this game and a lot of squinting, frankly speaking, if you've got bad eyes. Very small writing. But unfortunately, if it just black screens when I try and record it on computer, a lot of bad things going on there, and it just simply wouldn't work. So I decided to create a throwaway account in order to start from the very beginning so I could actually talk through everything. So now we're going to start with Immortal Gardening. The Immortal Garden is your classic um, way that you generate resources. It's very similar to Immortal Taoists in that regard, but there's an extra resource. You get your herbs, quite, quite a bit different, but... When you first start this, you really only want to be leveling your lumber mill and your beast farm so you can pump as much food as you can because the more food you have, obviously, the more servants you can put into resource generation of other things. Now, I will just actually might as well give you the example itself. I'm just going to put everything into food generation in order to get servants themselves and they will get more expensive up to a max cap of 3,000 food per servant. That's, that's the cap, it won't get higher than that, but 3,000 seems like a lot when you just start. When you first start, just level lumber, just level beast farm, preferably to 20-ish. That won't take very long at all when you are focusing on it. And you can use this top right button up here called Quick Order and it will automatically adjust all of your generation to that one particular one that you are trying to get the most of. So for now, for example, if we're just going to go for wood for ages, we get as much wood as we can, but you have to upgrade it in order to get more slots to I need more servants recruit please okay I've got no food for it but yes that's the first major tip here aiming at the lumber aiming at the beast farm in order to push as far as you can in food generation so you can get as much resources as you can now spiritual root we all know what a spiritual root is very similar to the chi gathering array in immortal towers it costs us spirit to upgrade in this one even though it says sprite up there in the top right <laughs> and of course you have your array that you level up that helps you produce more spirit every five seconds so i'm gonna upgrade that a bit as much as i can but that is the way that works you have your roots they have to level up it costs more every time but the difference with this one compared to immortal towers is that it actually gives you exactly what it does so when i upgrade for example, my attack, it just says point, plus 0.1% point attack, which is very straightforward. And frankly, simple is better with these kind of things because you can at least see the direct result of what you are upgrading. Now, in terms of what to focus on for your upgrading, you can really split it along all of them until you get your physique, which is going to be a while away from the point that you just start the game at, unfortunately. So I need to upgrade this to level two for the quest. <laughs> there we go. Quest done. Realm upgraded. All right, just got to break through a few times. Now, I wouldn't bother making pills for this entire realm. You don't need to. 95% is more than high enough to get it pretty much every time. Yep, yep, yep. Realm upgrading. Am I done? Yep. Bang. Array upgraded to five. Done. Any spirit root upgraded to level two. Done. Normal monsters killed. Now, when it comes to the normal maps, you will pass the first, because these are split into three levels, these first couple of levels split into sub-levels, and you will pass all of these quite quickly. It's very, very simple, very straightforward, but the key here is to level up enough in the first day, because the higher your realm, the higher level you are able to auto-battle. And auto-battle is going to be incredibly important, because you need souls. You need every single soul that you can get your hands on, and you get souls from killing monsters. And you need so many souls that you need to auto battle them you need to like there is no ifs ands or buts you simply need to do it but unfortunately the first levels you're going to have to do manually like i am right now have a look oh speed up battle thank you 
I do recommend enabling speed up battle automatically simply because after the four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, it will start getting faster. It's a lot better that way, trust me. I'm just trying to get through this. After being on my main, this is painful. <laughs> All right, instance done. Now I need to complete the first map. Now, fortunately, I died because I haven't paid much attention to actually leveling up, so I'm going to level up a few more times to boost my stats a little bit now. Your stats in between these R6, R7, up to 10 are pretty much negligible. It's not really that much of an increase in stats. The real stats comes when you go up a big realm, basically. So from early of expiration and inspiration to the next major realm. So there's going to be mid after early and then late after mid. And then once I get to that next milestone is when a massive stat increase will occur. So you do want to be pushing as far as you can, as fast as you can because you do generate enough to get quite far in one day. And if you can beat all of the maps here, you can start autoing them in order to get the souls. Now, I'm going to quickly be right back whilst I finish this damn South Grassland 1 so I can show you the example of auto-battling it. Now, it says I'm wounded down the bottom there. If you're wounded, your battle attributes will drop by 10%, and if you get wounded, if you fail the... <laughs> At any point during the mission, I was a bit overconfident in jumping straight in there when I was a R2, so that was stupid of me. Now that it's finished, I can show you the auto battle. So, down here, we got the auto. Now, I wish I had a cursor so I could fully show you, but it says we have two out of 50 times done, because I've attempted it once, I failed the first time, so that kind of sucked. But I completed it the second time, and now I have the option to auto battle it. But it requires earlier chi condensation R1 in order to auto battle this now that may take you an hour or two to get to depending on how much you play really you just have to keep breaking through it will be quite quick if you're constantly playing it and exploring how this game works jump into boom upgrade 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 recruit and more food and that's the kind of thing you're going to want to be doing upgrading the lumber mill upgrading the beast farm constantly getting that wood constantly getting that food now that instance exploring is done boom claim realm upgraded to r9 breath level done use 30 minute isolation order now that is basically in your inventory you get given a free half an hour isolation order and what that is is basically a bunch of cultivation base at once and that's always nice to have that's going to help you level up quite far really i'm going to try and get as far as i can now i am now at earlier forged body and i uh, this is where you get your first companion and your companion is going to be very important this is basically equivalent to the coupling system in a way but it's much more in-depth much more intricate much more complex and now i'm literally i suppose marrying them so boom associated with her as a partner and now i have on the right on the left here talent beast god reduced required spirit to develop divine beast now that's very important because we will get to beasts quite soon now when you first unlock your partner you are going to want to only do distance message once. So I'm going to start from the top left and I'm going to work my way across to the right. So you only need to do distance message once a day. That gives you five intimacy. Otherwise, you can pay Fairy J to do it. I will touch on the pay to win aspects of this game after I get through <laughs> the chunk of information that comes before. Now, at present, you will get flowers as you do quests. And these flowers are basically 10 intimacy for your partner. And you can only give one partner 20 gifts every day, but let me tell you, you are not going to have that many gifts at any time per day unless you are paying to win, unfortunately. Dual cultivation is exactly what you think it is, and it's going to increase their cultivation as well as the speed of your own cultivation for a certain amount of time. Or it'll give you cultivation points outright, which is always nice. Divorce. You, you don't want to do this at any time, even if you had a heartless letter, which is what's required for divorcing a partner. You don't want to divorce the partner. You need them because they are an important part of your battle power, especially if you're free to play. You're not going to see another partner for a long time, a long time. Okay, I'm late core realm and I have not seen another one. 
So yeah, bear that in mind. So cancel that. You won't have, you won't be able to divorce them anyway unless you've got that letter. So doesn't matter. Realm transformation is way higher level. I'm not even sure what this does itself. I'm assuming this is like deity, deity level. So state transfer elixirs I've never seen. So as I said, this is a complete beginner's guide because that is what I am. Now going into improve, you can only improve them after you reach a certain point of intimacy with them. And even then you still need a certain item to increase their stats, which you won't get for a long time. So you won't have to worry about that particular one. One thing about this game is that there are a lot of interfaces, a lot of buttons, a lot of things you can press, and a lot of them are completely unnecessary to beginners. So I can see how it would put people off. But I mean, that's the idea of this. That's why this video is going to be so goddamn long. And I apologize for that. But here we are. Secret skill. You're not going to see this secret skill for a long time. But when you do get them for a partner, they will be automatically put in there. You won't have to do anything. And it will tell you basically how much effect it's having on your partner itself. Now, details. This is a whole other interface. Now, where it says skill, obviously you've got your base attributes of your partner at the top there. They will improve massively as they cultivate. She is a freaking genius, let me tell you. Way stronger than you are. <laughs> like, by far. But you will need to reach foundation establishment with her or core formation with her as you as you level up. And within each of these tabs, I can't actually show you at the moment because she needs to be at least foundation establishment for me to show you. But within those tabs, you will get three skills that you can re-roll to try and find one that you like the sound of. So for example, it's going to be increase her physical defense by 10%, increase her magical defense by 8% increase hit by 15% or she might get a, a debuff attack for like a 15% chance to debuff an enemy for two turns sort of thing. Same thing core formation, love legend intimacy, that's a long way away let me tell you. A lot of intimacy. Now when we go into gear down the bottom here, I've actually yet to get any gear for a partner. I'm not even, I tried making some but it, I'm not sure if it was good enough to be equipped to her. So you don't have to worry about partner equipment for now. I will put more information on that sort of thing in the next video. I'm really just trying to, as much as it doesn't sound simple, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to make this simple. Isolation order done. Realm upgrade thing. I've got to keep, keep upgrading these realms. So as you can see, it is quite quick in, in leveling up quite quick. Realm upgraded. Spirit Root upgraded. Now, you can just follow these. It's going to be easier for you if you follow them because it gives you, at the very least, a small idea of what you can do. I need more servants. Thank you. Bam, straight back into food because I don't have enough food to produce enough servants to max food. And you always want max food all the time. Max food equals most efficient resource generation. That's just the way it is. And since I started at instance at the beginning of this video down here, I'm going to see if I can actually auto early chi condensation. But once you get that, you will be able to auto that level and there will be an option that says auto sell equipment and auto sell souls. Once you reach that and you are able to auto and you don't have to manually do them and you will have to manually do quite a few levels because that's just the way this game works. Unfortunately, you will have to do manual levels to get items when you are low level. But you have to make sure you don't sell the souls from your auto wandering, I suppose. Because you will need every single soul you can muster in order to do your alchemy. And alchemy is a very complex topic that I'm going to try and touch on. But this is going to be such a long video. Oh, God. Now, let's go into business league. This is... Simpler than it looks, to be quite honest with you. I'm going to start in Heaven Source and we'll go from there. Fairy Jade is basically the premium currency of the game and this is where you can spend premium currency of the game. You will get quite a lot of Fairy Jade when you first start the game through the seven-day noob event that comes up and I'll touch on that as well. But one thing at a time. Generally speaking, you won't get anything from here if you're afraid to play. The one thing I do recommend is this Chaos Secret skill for 500 Fairy Jade. You save up all of your Fairy Jade and you get this damn skill. 
because it is the equivalent to a perception book. It will increase your cultivation skill. I'm currently saving up for the second secret skill, which is 980 Fairy Jade on my other account. But that's going to be critical to leveling both presently and in the future because more cultivation base per five seconds is obviously more in a day by a lot, even if it is 322, which is the max that that Chaos Secret skill gives you. Now, the rest is relatively above uh, um, beginner level, so that's really all I'm going to talk about in the Heaven Source Hall. Of course, you can go upstairs, but you will need an Ascension Order to do that, and that is not beginner. Teleportation Pavilion, you're going to need Core Formation, and you have to be perfection of Core Formation. And let me tell you, I'm not even peak. I am late Core, then there's peak Core, then there's perfect Core. So, a long way away. <laughs> But that teleport is what I'm assuming teleports you to the fairyland or I, I, like the equivalent of heaven, really. A harder area with more stuff in it, basically. Now, the foundry is basically where you can buy items. I don't recommend doing this because you will always be able to get all of these items. All of these items are from the first, second and third level that you saw me do there. Save your spirit stones. Don't bother buying this stuff, you know manually do it and farm them. Only when you auto do you want to sell the equipment that you get because your bag will fill up so fast because there are so many souls. So many souls and you will need all of them. Now going down into Alchemy Pavilion, this is where confusion occurs with people. Uh, I get quite a few messages on the old ones like, what what's going on? Where do I get these things from? Now the first thing is, you need to learn an alchemy skill before you get these formulas. But once you get the alchemy skill, and I will actually do that after I finish explaining this, you will need to work on buying all of the white formulas, the white labeled formulas. Those are C1 formulas. Those are the ones you want, and they will help you level both yourself and your spirit beast. And your spirit beast is an important companion as well. You're allowed three people in a fight, you and your partner, plus a spirit beast. It's generally the way it goes until you get a second partner, which is quite a long way away, let me tell you. Now these bottom ones, these, oh, thank you, these bottom ones, C1 Blue Spirit Elixir Prescription, increase attack permanently. Now that sounds great, and it is great, don't get me wrong, but when you first start this game, you will not be able to A, afford that, B, make them, because they're incredibly expensive, so do not waste your Spirit Stone on that yet until you can afford to make them. You will need many, many, many souls and many beast souls. And you don't get beast souls just from anywhere. You have to decompose spirit beasts that you've hatched. So bear that in mind before you waste your spirit stones here. Aim at the white ones first and work on getting everything. Because in the end, you will need every single type of pill that is white. Thus far, I have on my main account got all the white formulas and I'm currently working on leveling up my spirit beast which requires these power develop elixirs, ghost cold elixirs, dragon elixirs, frost snow elixirs, you need all of them because your spirit beast will level up in realms as well like early, mid, late and you know, etc. So you will need all of it. I know I am confusing you so I will go and explain alchemy after I go through the rest of this. Now, the Grand Source Hall is not really a beginner's area because mystery areas cost a lot to get, but you will have to get these eventually, but I don't recommend getting any of them yet. If you've just started, please don't waste your spirit stone. You won't be able to pass the levels. <laughs> Trust me. And now I will revisit this area later on because this is more intermediate sort of stuff, especially the astrology bee, that's where we get into talismans and creating talismans, which are a huge power boost, but we will get there another day. Now, Regulus Recycling, this is a super advanced area, and you're not going to need to know anything about this for now, so I'm going to skip it. You don't need to go into there, you're all good. Now, the bottom right there, Free Fairy J, that right there is the only ad in the game, really. I've, I haven't seen another one, and I've been playing for about 10 days now. Very much worth doing. You can do, I think, five a day, four or five Fairy J a day. Highly recommend doing it, because that combined with the daily tasks will get you 
at least 50 fairy jade a day and that's what you want honestly speaking that's that's what you want now the avatar button is obviously this is you everything around this avatar in the middle is basically your equipment and the items that you currently wear that's going to affect your stats directly obviously and in skill attributes this attack configurable defense configurable and origin config configurable those are your actual skills that you'll learn from a sect now I will join a sect of course quite soon because I have to explain how to actually get alchemy because it is a bit fiddly it's a bit confusing and I think I'll have to end the video there because it, it, this is going to go on too long and I'm going to have to make a second video <laughs> And I'm not going to explain that bottom ring yet, that bottom set of buttons, because there is there is not much point, because some of it we've already been through, such as the partner button. The lineup is important. You do have to add your partner to your lineup. So that's an important one, actually. So just click lineup, click the plus button, add it in, boom, done. You're now fighting with a partner, and you will do so much better. You'll breeze through those first few levels you keep leveling up your realm in order to start autoing the first one and you'll start getting an income of souls that are going to be able to fund your level one pills that you're going to need to make <laughs> now i'm not going to touch on the rest because that's very much not beginners now at the top here we've got physique and we've got god's vision which currently is common eye here so physique you're not going to need to worry about physique until you re get an item that's going to actually give you a random physique. Now the physiques range from metal, wood, water, fire and earth and when you get it, it will reduce the amount of spirit required and increase the effectiveness of the spirit root itself. So once you get your physique, it's going to be a lot easier to level up whatever corresponding attribute it is. So you're basically hoping for a metal physique, but it's not that bad if you don't get it. I myself got an earth one and my second physique ended up being water. So I got physical and magical defense and dodge. <laughs> Dow, I mean, Dow of taking a punch right there. But yeah, that's basically how the physique works. Now, the eyes, God's vision, common eyes. These are actually, you will need some items from the grand source hall called Drunk Dragon Liquid. Now, don't buy it because it's 50 freaking thousand spirit stone. Throughout this seven day event that you have up here, you will actually acquire six. And by the time you reach that reward, you will be able to afford a seventh and you can buy that one from the shop and then unlock your first set of eyes. And those eyes are gonna range from, there's a few different kinds of eyes and I'm sure someone can describe which kind of eyes or in the comments below or give a link to the Discord because there are a good amount of information this is just more for a follow along guide. Now race human, you're not going to even change race until you leave the immortal continent, which is the first continent. You're not going to you're not going to you don't have to worry about that for a long time. Now obviously you've got your bag over here. Quite simple. That's your divine beast eggs. You're going to find them from actually doing the instances basically. And it's going to be random finding, but you're going to get the most from autoing. So, as always, I keep saying it, autoing is incredibly important. Now, explore, only early core formation can do explore, and I will be putting up the first video on that probably in, like tomorrow or something because of my main character is in core formation and I can actually do that. And I haven't touched it yet because I was like, yeah, I'll wait till I, I'll do a video on it. That way it's like recorded. Everyone can see like what I did, how I did it, what it requires and what you get from it. Up in the top left here, we've got our macrocosm. That is literally, it's just a map. It's just a map. You don't need to worry about this, really. The Penglai continent is basically, I mean, the equivalent of heaven, I guess. That's where you ascend to after you reach nascent soul, I believe. And all of these sects here are the ones you can join while you are in the immortal continent. And you will have to choose carefully because once you betray a sect, you can't go back to it. You, that's it. You're fucked. You need a special item that will make them forget you betrayed them. And also, if you betray them, you will actually lose all of your skills unless you find the equivalent skill in this tour button. But I can't do that because I need to be late of soul coagulating. So I suppose it's not really a beginner thing. You have to ungate the skills. If you, if you don't ungate the skills and you leave the sect, you lose all the skills. They're all gone and you're fucked. 
So you do need to be careful about which sect you join to begin with because it makes a damn difference. <laughs> now, the coal sect, I'm going to... But you will have to choose one of these sects prior to joining a larger sect, I suppose, is the difference there. So you need to choose between these three before you reach chi condensation or alternatively you can just be a rogue cultivator until you get there but for the sake of this guide i'm going to join the coal school it's just it's easier that way so this is your now this is actually a thumbnail for one of my videos <laughs> of course i betrayed them and left before i knew what i was doing so yeah that was my mistake so alchemy first of all i'm only gonna touch on alchemy because this video has been going on too fucking long so alchemy you need to talk to the alchemist and learn. Now you need to learn this alchemy skill. Boom. You've got to pay some spirit stones, nice and cheap. Obviously I don't have enough because I'm an absolute scrub. Alright, what can I sell to make 500? To sell. Ah oh, shit, i got nothing. Um, oh, goodbye egg. Now don't you dare sell your egg, alright? Don't you dare do that. I'm only doing this because I'm just giving you the example and showing you how to do this. I'm breezing through this. What I've done up to this point should take you a little while to do because you, you don't want to rush it. You want to take your time, build up your souls, build up everything so you can actually make something when you learn the alchemy. So alchemy, learn, boom. Learned alchemy. Now, back here, and we get the bottom here, we go into skills. And we go across to special skills. This is your alchemy skill. Now, you will receive energy. Energy is basically like, I suppose it's focus. You focus on the skill. And once you reach 120 for this particular alchemy skill, you have mastered it and you can learn the second level skill. But you won't learn the second level skill till you go on to a sect that actually has alchemy level 2. This sect only has alchemy level 1. But... Now you're going to need to go into trade and you're going to have to actually buy a bronze furnace. And that is annoying in and of itself. So I'm just going to go into the sect hall. I've got to find a way to get some spirit stones. So boom, sect hall. Going to talk to the sect leader, say hello, get some contribution, talk to the elder, and I'm going to explore the remains. Now the reason I'm doing this is because this gives me not only elixirs to help me advance, but also spirit stones and sect contributions. So when you first pick your sect, try and push as far as you can in this, because it will help a lot. I'm only doing this purely because I want to just get this bloody furnace. <laughs> get him! Oh god, will I even be able to? That's the question. My name is very, very accurate. Is that enough? Yeah, I need a couple more. Alright, back into the fight. Although, I'm actually going to have to upgrade a bit just to get a bit stronger. <laughs> Try and get to mid of Forge Body here. Should be strong enough to get an extra 200 Spirit Stones for that damn cauldron. Now again, you shouldn't have this issue. Like, you, you will be fine if you are manually doing these instances as well as autoing it when you when you can. Alright, awesome. <laughs> Back to alchemy. Trade. Alright, now, you buy the furnace. The first thing you're going to want to do is go straight into your bag and lock that motherfucker so you don't accidentally sell it. Because I did that before. It was a bad move. I was very upset because I lost a green furnace from doing that. And that pissed me off for a long time. <laughs> and I haven't got one since. Now, you can't actually go into the alchemy room without jumping into the business league, going into the alchemy pavilion and buying a prescription, basically. So, for the sake of this, I can't afford... I can't afford any of it, ladies and gentlemen. I can't afford any of it. But, basically, you will have to buy one of these, then you will have to go into your inventory and actually use it. Now, once you've used it, you can jump back into your alchemy room, go into alchemy, and you can view all of the prescriptions that you own, as well as the requirements to make it and what the materials will be to make it. Now, with that furnace, particular furnace, you will only be able to make 10 pills at a time. 
but chances are you won't have the resources to do that and I don't recommend making anything below foundation establishment pills except for the pills for your pet to level it up and even then it's expensive it's very expensive so and even during foundation establishment i honestly yoloed it half the time I, I just let it attempt it if it failed fuck it you know i just kept doing it and i've still managed to get to late core at 120 years which isn't too bad not great it's not genius but you know it is what it is now lastly the pay to win the pay to win here is actually probably the best value pay to win um if you're going to spend any money for the love of God, spend it during this seven-day event. You won't regret it if you're going to spend money. And if you can, try to do every single thing except, obviously, these packs. You don't have to do that because you can claim those for free. <laughs> now, now that, there you go. Dollar fifty-nine for that. Not worth. Well, depending on I'm a free-to-play and that's like my thing. So, you know, to each their own, in my opinion. You've got your login reward. Get it all. The ancient sect order is what you're going to need to join the sect, Ancient Sword sect. That is the sect I'm in at the moment. Worth it. Swords are amazing, but that's besides the point. You do want to do as much as you can of this event. And you see here, Matt Blitz Order, Fairy Jade, Spirit Stone. They're locked. Claim it. Continue to receive. You're going to have to pay a little bit of money in order to unlock the rest of them. But depending on how much you like this game, that could end up being worth it. You're going to get a lot more value for money in this game than you would in Immortal Towers. I can't even deny that. For example, look at the monthly card. It costs five bucks and you get 40 Fairy Jade a day along with 20 Blitz Orders. Now those Blitz Orders means you instantly complete a... It's like ordering a instance, except it's instant. <laughs> it doesn't take a minute to do. And that makes a lot of difference when you have like, for example, seven levels you need to auto... You could do 50 at once, boom, one's done. You don't have to wait 50 minutes, then go on to the next one, 50 minutes, don't go on to the next one, 50 minutes. And the annual card's even great, to be honest. 100 bucks, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to get it, but 100 bucks for 100 Fairy Jade a day, 1,000 Spirit Stone a day, 50 Blitzes, like, it's... There's a lot, there's a lot. Like, that is quite a lot. And to each their own in terms of pay to win, but it is good. If you're going to pay to win, do it during the event. Don't wait till after it. It's not worth it. Well, it's still worth it compared to Immortal Towers, but, you know. Now, I'm going to leave this here because, oh dear, it is going on too long, frankly speaking. If I've missed anything, chuck it in the comments. I will add it into the next video. I'm sure I've missed some things. I just kept talking, you know. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you think. Again, for people who play this game and I've missed some things, chuck it in the comments, add it in, and we will make this a great guide. And if you can hear that rushing noise, that's the friggin' there is a storm going on at the moment. And I need to wrap this up because I'm going to need to start screaming soon. As always, have a great day.